What's up, everyone? The Broken Unicorns here uh, in celebration of Season 5. It's been a Coming. long, cold winter without MLP. <sighs> Tell me about it. And even more so because Season 5 is now only two weeks away. <laughs> well, one week and six days but at this point. Woo! We're doing this on Sunday. Celebratory woo! Yes, w here is our top ten list of best MLP episodes leading up to season, well, all the way up to season four. Now the hard part was actually putting which ones we like best, so we kind of just did categories for each of our favorites in that category. Yeah, our favorite, no, in which for the categories we have like one for each of the main six. You want to tell them the rules on that one? One for each of the main six. The episode has to be mainly them. It has to be focused on them, and they have to be the one who learns the lesson in the end. Well, they don't have to be, like, the prime focus, but they have to be in the spotlight. Yes, that's what I mean. And, uh, our next category... Well, let's not give away the categories. Let's do the categories as we go along. They get the yeah. idea. Yeah, like, we have one for the main six, of course, and you'll see them as we come along, so let's just start off with the main six, and, of course, let's go with... Twilight. Yeah, best ascended... No, best ascended... Uh, why can't I say that? Best ascended princess... Not best princess, though. But we'll get to that later. For the time being, Twilight. What was our favorite? Lesson Zero. Lesson Zero. Just watching her lose her mind, I got... Oh, uh, I feel bad laughing at her for it, but it was uh, funny. It was so funny. Because it, it was just all the slapstick, and then you just saw her going crazy over time. Oh, not to mention Big Max best moment. <laughs> Smarty pants. Oh, yeah. He takes away the uh, stuffed... Thingy. Why do I yeah. feel like Apple Bloom constantly steals that and hides it from him just to mess with him? I mean, we saw in one episode. Her yeah, bed it was under her up. bed. I feel like she just takes that from him and hides it just anyway, to mess with him. Next to uh, next main six. Of course, best of the main six, Fluttershy. Fluttershy. Alrighty, which one did we choose for that? Keep calm and flutter on. Oh, of course. The reformation of the great and powerful Discord. Yes, and. All that angel revenge that we've been waiting for. Yeah. He finally got his comeuppance in the form of Discord fucking with him. Oh, I'm fairly sure Discord is aware of the outside world and knows we hate him. Yeah. Seriously, just he got. I didn't even feel bad though. Like the only way, I, I, I the only way it would have been better is if he had taken Diamond freaking Tiara and tossed her into space. That's the only way that could have been. Maybe better. that happens in the comics. I do hear that he goes on a journey with CMC, time traveling no less. Shut up! <laughs> okay, so who's the next one? Rarity. Alrighty, for this one we got the dog and pony show. Showing off her how she deals with combat. No matter what, every time we think of Rarity's funniest moments, we keep coming back to this episode. She's a rogue! This is whining! She outsmarts her enemies, and that's just awesome. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, the whining scene though. We had to watch that. Yeah, we had to watch that while we were making this list, just because it came up in the conversation, and we <laughs> hadn't watched that in a while. Oh God, hey, can you listen to it? <laughs> just her, her, her body language too was brilliant. Right. The stomping and stuff. Next up, we got Rainbow Dash's category, in which we chose the Wonderbolts Academy. Da, 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 that's the Top Gun theme. Yeah, we all know. But, um... Yeah, we already know about the parody. Even those of us who've never seen Top Gear know this parody. Top Gun. Top Gun. Top Gear is a show on the History Channel. Oh, yeah. But, anyway, this was a it's great funny. episode. I think it ran for a season. And it was between this and uh, Wonderbolts Academy, right? Uh, no, nah, we have Wonderbolts Academy. Oh, don't don't give it away. Uh, I don't know what else we have. No, we had in tie for this. But we'll talk. We'll talk about it. Uh, well, there's it's one we actually, didn't... I don't think it's actually on this list. Well, there's one no, we didn't... No, it isn't. Nope. There's one we didn't think of while we were talking about this. We didn't think of Rainbow Falls. But... Oh, yeah. I know that Rainbow Dash learns the episode, but the best part of that episode is when Fluttershy punches, uh, Snowflake by accident. He just walks away crying. <laughs> Peace for Rainbow Dash! Actually, that begins with an R. Never mind! Moving on. <laughs> Next up, we have Pinky's category. Pinky. Now, Pinky, we actually had to... Uh, My other favorite. Yeah. You'll actually find that 
We didn't go for the biggest, best Pinky episode because that one comes up later. At we'll least see. the one that we initially would have had in this category. Yep, it's actually crossed off on the list. Yeah, <laughs> so it will come. The one that we actually originally wanted up here before we came up with our ten, uh, with our tenth category. Don't tell them. I think they've probably already guessed. Probably. But yeah, for this one, we have too many pinkies. Because everything about that episode Obs was just, just crazy. It was insane. It was pure absurdist <laughs> comedy, and I loved everything. It was incredible. It. Just sit there and just watch the screen and just watch everything. Just fun, fun, fun. Uh, yes. Oh, was... Rainbow Dash. <laughs> How did you do that? Don't question it. It's Pinkie Pie. Yeah, just it took everything that's pinky and multiplied it, which just. Well, literally. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Apple John, Flutter. Well, what did she call Fluttershy? Flutter Shutter? I don't know. I think it was Flutter Shutter. And then it, for some reason, I kept saying Flutter Shutter after, after. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good episode, though. One of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have AJ's category, which, of course, would be the last one on the list because, well, he was the one writing it. And, of course, Applejack. With every Applejack episode, we know the focus is not just on her, but her family. And hence why we said that they have to be in the spotlight, not just the focus. And for this one, of course, we went with the best one that she is highlighted in, and that's Pinky Apple Pie. Absolutely. And again, family, Pinky Pie. Oh, I still get that song stuck in my head. I can't <laughs> yeah. get it out. But um, I like this episode. This episode had Pinky's absurdist humor. A lot of <laughs> it had a lot of Big Mac too. Granny Smith. Yep. Just the apples all together. <laughs> they go through yeah. that dark cave. And that's the big thing of why we couldn't exactly have a particular AJ focused and call it her best one because no matter what, she is a supportive character. Yep, she's the pillar. She is the pillar. And honestly, I I'd say if it weren't for her down no, no, downward intuitiveness, the whole freaking cast would crumble. They'd be dead. <laughs> Pinky would probably get herself killed doing something funny. Rainbow Dash would crash into a wall and die. And if you really think of it, they all wouldn't have even known each other. True. She did kind of pull things together there, didn't she? Mm-hmm. But she just doesn't have enough great moments to be best pony. But yes, next up, we have another character focus category, and that's the CMC. The Cutie Mark Crusaders. Yep. And for that one, we actually had a tie on this one because we really couldn't choose. And yep. I, I think there's actually a reason for this one of why we couldn't particularly choose. We actually just started the recording right after we uh, got this list going yeah. and a few videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But for this one, we have Flight to the Finish and the Key Mark Chronicles. The Cutie Mark Chronicles. And that but one... The reason for the Cutie Mark... Cutie Mark Chronicles getting on there is particularly because of the main six stories. The main six subplot. Subplot. Yeah, it's a, that, was, that was interesting to see how it kind of all came how together. How they all got their Cutie Marks and how they're actually connected by one incident caused by Rainbow Dash, no less. She's the glue. <laughs> glue. Because glue's made of horses. Yeah, they wouldn't have found oh. their talent if it weren't for Rainbow Dash. They wouldn't have actually come together if it weren't for... Uh, Applejack. Applejack. The elements of harmony wouldn't have worked, and they wouldn't have even gone on this quest to begin uh, on the quest that made him friends to begin with if it weren't for Twilight. So, what are the other three's major contribution outside of being other elements of harmony? Elements. Did I uh, say that? You did. <laughs> um, well, Pinky's the comedy. Without her, everybody would be depressed all the time. Okay. Um, Rarity. Well, I'm talking about just the meeting. Oh, for the meeting, no. For the meeting, they don't seem to have any major contribution, but the other three seem to. I'm wondering if that's actually going to tie in later. Tie in. But, yes. As for Flight to the Finish, uh, there's a lot to this one. Yeah. There is a lot to this Good one. Lesson, and I know man. for a fact we're taking a lot from Season 4 here. Season 4 was the best one. I can't lie. Neither can I. I have to say what really ruined that episode for me and why it was kind of hard for me to put it on the list was Diamond freaking Tiara. Yeah, it took me convincing him that Diamond Tiara was good antagonistic force. I was throwing... For not only being an external antagonist as just 
yeah, it's a freaking another person. It's Dime freaking Tiara. But even more so, causing an internal conflict with, uh, with Scootaloo. Of, See, that's she the problem. Can't fly. Scootaloo's my favorite out of the three of them. Yeah. You don't make fun of my favorite. And, uh, you know, I can see why she was a good conflict, but I still want to get the plushie and kind of crucify it. <laughs> oh, God. Of course you would. I was throwing invisible rocks at the screen. I think you remember that. Anyway, our next one is best two-parter. This was a tough one. We really had to pick one two-parter. We were insistent on making sure that this was going to be a category one in the end. Mm -hmm. And we insisted on just one two-parter, and for that one, we had to go with the season four finale, Twilight's Kingdom. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z fight, first of all. Yes. Tyrk was an incredible enemy. Well, until he got... He wasn't as good when he got big. I mean, he was threatening, but he, he, I like that voice in the beginning. That, is he friend or foe? Is he friend or is he foe? The little pony asks. I assure you, I'm no friend. And then just sucks the man. And then he right sounds out. like this. And then he sounds like this. Where is your magic? Come! <laughs> Speaking of which, William Shatner, but we'll get on that later. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's something. We'll that mention that at the end. But uh, this episode was just great. There was so much action, so much going on. And, you know. I, I've been watching a lot of reviews lately. They're making this point about the princesses always being taken out of the plot so the main so six can come in. So that Twilight can just save... The, yeah, Twilight and the main six can save the day. I think Luna could have taken Tyrick. Really? Well, I'm, ob I'm obligated being that she's my favorite character to think that, but you know. Yeah. But, uh, next one is... The best episode featuring a villain not uh, that is not a two-parter. And I and think for this, this one's one, pretty we had obvious. A, yeah, we had a pretty limited number that could have actually made it onto this category. Hey, even if there were more, this would have been my favorite. But for literally the best villain, if she if they can't be in a two-parter, because originally we were thinking Chrysalis was going to land this one, but... That she was in a two-parter. Yeah. And for this one, we had to go with, well, Trixie, Magic yes. Duel. We had to go with Magic Duel in particular because that's when she's her most villainous, and albeit it is under the influence of the Alicorn Amulet. Yeah, and I mean, I think that there's a lot to Trixie they haven't developed yet. I mean, just with the with the ego and stuff. I think there's more to it, but I think it'll come up in later seasons because I really I can't see her not making a return because she's yeah, a pretty she popular has to character. Come back. She's in the comics. She's twice in the show, and I really do want to see her come back in season five. That and would be interesting. What is it? Every other season they return a character. She was in one. She appeared again in three. Mathematically, she might appear again in five. Yeah. Probably, probably is a less threatening character, but I want to see her come back. I hated her at first, and I don't know what happened. I just really started to enjoy her. Yeah, she was... She's a fun character. I mean, it would be nice to see her come back. Yeah. And lastly, this is the one that we actually had to cross out here. And recategorize, and that's the best music. Yep, and this <laughs> and one's going to be pretty can, obvious. And when you go for music, you can't beat Dan Ingram being a former bandmate of Weird, Weird Al, Al Yankovic. So, of course, which one's on here? Pinky Pride! And plus all the antics. The antics and whatnot. <laughs> oh, God. It was just a great episode, the antics during the musical. I mean, it was just... One musical after another, after another, after another, but it didn't get so deeply in your face as it was very well done as Magical Mystery Cure. And yes, oh. it was so very well done because it switched music types during yeah. it. Like it went to a pink, it went to Pinky doing a ballad with Polka uh, being the previous uh, musical number, and then following that is the goof off, which is just insanity and with Polka mixed in. I feel like I should have an honorable mention to Pinky rapping. Oh yeah, we. Well, that's just. I think that one's particularly great, just out of the randomness that came from it. Yeah. I mean, who expected rapping, '90s style rapping, no less, in My Little Pony? I did. <laughs> you waited for it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I added another category. Yeah, we have an obligatory eleventh category here. Best Luna episode. 
This was all my idea. I was the one who had to pick the episode, though. Yeah, I let him pick the episode because I forced and him to category. That one, well, let's see. We have a bit of the focus from Apple Bloom because of uh, uh, Pinky Apple Pie. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of Scootaloo focus because of Flight to the Finish. And so why not a bit of Sweetie Belle focus with... Squeaky Bell. Yes, with For Whom the Sweetie Belle Toils. Yes, and I'm sure we've all seen this episode, but it's got a lot of Luna, which is pretty <laughs> awesome. Now, my previous choice was Luna Eclipse, because I feel like that's where we really got to know the character and the kind of duality between the serious and the goofy side. We see a lot more of that in the comics. But overall, this was a great episode. There was good lesson learned, and there was a lot of Luna. And there was a lot of Luna, too. I'm just letting you go on. Uh, well, what else did I like about the episode? Sweetie Belle is a very close second in my favorite out of the CMC, too. I will say that. Apple Bloom, yeah, she's, she's cool, but Sweet, Sweetie Belle does that squeaking thing, which just makes me laugh. I, I can't lie. But, so um, what about the other Luna episodes, like, say, uh, Sleepless in Ponyville? Sleepless in Ponyville. Scoot I, her scooter. Oh, episode. right. That was another. See, that's where we start to see what her powers do. She can go into dreams, which is just plain freaking awesome. Yeah, and then you get to see what her powers can really do in, can, Sweetie, in whom Sweetie Belle toils. They can screw with your mind. Nightmare Moon. Nightmare Moon! Nightmare Moon! Mentally advanced. Never mind. You should have uh, worn the banana suit, Celestial! Why do I really feel like in the history of, of, of them, she actually tried <laughs> to get her to do something like that at some point? What if she dressed up as Celestia and who dressed up as a banana suit? Just walked around Just the Just people think she did it? <laughs> yeah. Well, she dressed up as Celestia in the comics. Well, that was cover up for her. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like, though, and I'm not, I'm 100% I'm serious. I feel like at some point in their history, she, maybe not a banana, but tried to get her to do something foolish just because she thought it would be funny. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. If you read the comics, you see a lot of that side of her, and it probably happened at some point. But yes, that about wraps it up for our top 11. Yes. In categories. You got a bonus episodes. category with Best Princess. That's a good thing. Fanboy. Shut up. I'm not a fanboy. I'm just a fan. Uh-huh. Is that all you got? That's not much of an argument. Hey, look. Your finger's over there. Yes, quite. Anyway, later, everyone. And we will see you... Well, we'll actually talk to you in a couple weeks. And yep. hopefully we'll have something up next week as well. Luna's Best Princess.